Hello, and welcome to Professor Black's History. One of the things a lot of people don't like about history is that it has a lot of dates and facts that you have to remember. But what I like about history is that it's all about stories. Stories about extraordinary people doing extraordinary things and sometimes against even more extraordinary odds. So what I'd like to do today is uh, talk to you about someone you probably never heard of. Because when we talk black history, a lot of times people are left out of textbooks for whatever reason, or uh, they are in books and on the internet, but you just don't know the names to look for. So what we decided to do was give you an opportunity to learn some of the names that you should look for and learn some extraordinary stories. Uh, the first person we're going to talk about today is a guy named Bass Reeves. Now, whenever you hear people talk about the Old West, and you talk about the famous marshals of the Old West, you always hear the names like Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Wild Bill Hickok, uh, people like that. But uh, I will put Bass Reeves up against any of them, perhaps even the greatest lawman of the West has ever known. You say you never heard about him? Well, let me just tell you a little story about Bass Reeves. Bass Reeves was born um, in Texas. Uh, he was a slave when he was born. Born around Paris, Texas, he was a slave to a man named George Reeves. And as he grew up, he grew up to uh, first uh, work in the fields, taking water to the uh, slave in the fields' hands. Uh, and then um, he was also, uh, um, he, he grew up at, at, during that time uh, and became a field hand himself for a little while. But then George Reeves decided to make Bass Reeves his uh, manservant. So basically Bass's job was to make sure that George had his, uh, his clothes ready and had, was at his beck and call to help him in every way. Well, when the Civil War started, Texas, of course, was on the side of the, the Confederacy. So George Reeves decided to go and fight in the Civil War, taking Bass Reeves along with him. Of course, Bass took the name of Reeves just like most slaves at the time took the uh, name of the slave owner. Anyway, uh, so they go to war in the Civil War, and this part of the story is a little bit fuzzy, not sure, a lot of people are not sure about what happened here uh, in this particular uh, part of the story, but uh, it seems that Bass Reeves and George Reeves got into either a fight or Bass Reeves heard about how great the, uh, uh, being free was because a lot of people were escaping slavery and becoming free at the time and he ran away. Some people say they were in the middle of a card game and Bass Reeves accused George Reeves of cheating and at that time uh, George Reeves uh, and Bass Reeves got in a fight and Bass Reeves knocked him out so his best bet was to escape. He escaped to Indian Territory and of course Indian Territory now the states of Oklahoma and Kansas and places like that but at the time Indian Territory was a place where you could not go and um, uh, be a wimp of any type because Indian Territory was very very dangerous uh, many of the outlaws and criminals who had escaped uh, the regular uh, law enforcement were, uh, were there and you could not go into Indian Territory unless you kind of knew what you were doing. But he spent time with the Seminole and Cheek, uh, Creek Indians and as he spent time with these uh, Native Americans he learned really really how to um, uh, handle a weapon. Uh, he became an expert shot uh, he even became so good at a rifle. He always claimed he wasn't too great, but uh, they would never allow him in the turkey shoots of the day. Uh, but Bass Reeves was a guy who was incredible. Now, here's the thing. Today, people always complain about what they don't have, what they can't do, what they can and can't do. But Bass Reeves was a guy who made his own way. After living a while with the, with the Native Americans, uh, the Civil War went and ended, and he was emancipated. He came back uh, to the uh, so-called states. I went to Arkansas and got married. He and his wife had ten children. They had five boys and five girls. Uh, at this time, too, uh, in Texas, or I should say in the Wild West, uh, they had, like I say, a lot of lawless people. And Judge Isaac Parker was, um, was given the job of cleaning that part of the territory up. So they sent uh, out for marshals. Bass Reeves became the first African American to serve as a deputy marshal uh, for the United States. Uh, west of the Mississippi. Now here's the thing, uh, Bass was a great, great uh, guy. Uh, he, was, he knew what he was doing at all times. He also understood a lot of the Native American ways and how to track people. Uh, again, he was a great shot, but more importantly, he was a person with persistence. 
He never went after a person that he didn't eventually catch. Now, um, there's lots of stories about Bass Reeves. One of the things that fascinates me about him is that he could not read, but he never failed to produce the proper warrant when it was asked for. Because before he would leave to go and catch these criminals, he would get the warrant and have someone read it to him, and he would memorize which warrant was for what and for whom. So Bass Reeves was a very intelligent guy. He also was a great detective. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there's one story about uh, Bass, because he loved disguises as well. Uh, but he was a great detective, and he, uh, he was after these two guys who were bank robbers and very vicious criminals. And so he went to their homestead, or their home, uh, and their mother was there. Well, he was dressed in ragged clothes, and he had hidden his badge and his handcuffs. And he convinced his, their mother that he was there uh, as a desperado himself, just looking for some shelter for the night. Well, she talked to him, and when the boys came home, uh, they made a, heard, she heard a whistle out in the, in the uh, woods, and then she whistled back, and Bash noticed that that was their signal. Anyway, they came in, uh, they allowed him to come in and sleep under the same roof that night. But while the two criminals were asleep, Bass Reeves got up, handcuffed them together in their sleep, and then in the morning he arrested them, took them back to his camp, which is about 25 miles away. And for the first three or four miles, their mother was running behind him, throwing pots and pans and cussing and fussing because Bass Reeves had tricked her and uh, he had gotten uh, his, her sons um, and put them in custody. Now, Bass Reeves, again, like I said, one of the greatest marshals of all time in the Old West. As a matter of fact, I don't think you can compare anybody with him with the number of arrests. He had 3,000 arrests of criminals, from murderers to bootleggers, all kinds of people. At one point, he even had to arrest one of his sons for murder. So he's a man of great integrity. He ended up going, uh, uh, his last part of his career, in Muskegee, uh, um, uh, Oklahoma, and uh, he was uh, um, on the police force. He was always a very, very dapper dresser. Uh, when he was in the Old West, uh, they always said he wore a, a long black coat, uh, had really shiny boots, his, his hat was always real sharp. So he was real clean, and that's one of the things I like about him too. When you see these cats on TV, they got all kind of messed up outfits, but Bass Reeves stayed clean, uh, he believed in being sharp, and he projected himself in such a manner. Um, he was, like I say, he was a very, very um, uh, great um, uh, uh, shooter, he, um, person with a gun. He was just as good as anybody else in the Old West. Uh, he carried two guns. He carried them with the butt forward so he could have a real fast draw. Um, Bass Reeves is a person that you really need to go to the history books, not the history textbook, because then you probably won't find it. But go to the history books, um, go to the internet, and look up the name Bass Reeves. He's probably the greatest peace officer uh, in the American West, and probably the one that you've never heard of. But check it out. They even say that at one point, somebody's going to make a movie about his life. Uh, there was also a rumor, I don't know how true this is or not, but it sounds good, that the movie Hang Em High uh, with Clint Eastwood many years ago was a story taken from the life of Bass Reeves. Bass Reeves, probably the most uh, outstanding lawman the Old West has ever seen. And that's this issue of Professor Black's History. Hope you enjoyed it. Join us next time when we'll have more fun stories to tell.